I was working as a breast cancer nurse at the Royal Marsden Hospital and had an opportunity to work in the lymphedema clinic. And as my intention was to ultimately go on and work with palliative care patients where lymphedema is quite often a big problem, I took it. However, I got so interested that I didn't just stay a year, but I stayed 14 years, and not all at the Marsden, and uh, developed my expertise in specific aspects of lymphedema and education as well with patients and healthcare professionals. And then came and worked at the London Haven, focusing specifically on the breast care group. As part of my practice here, I'd have a lot of people who were the worried well coming through as far as lymphedema were concerned. They'd been told that they were at risk and therefore they wanted to see somebody about how to reduce that risk. I found myself giving the same information time after time after time and decided to develop a leaflet and then an exercise class to have a group in together to talk through the particular issues and in particular to teach them exercises. And I found that that has been a very valuable way for people to feel empowered to help themselves. Whether they choose to do and follow all the advice is entirely up to them, but they're equipped. They also know when something occurs, what then they can do about it. And also one of the important things that I find to tell them is that the treatments, if somebody develops lymphedema, in terms of the exercise, skin care and infection advice is all the same as before they develop swelling. So if they already know what to do, if they then go on and develop lymphedema, there's no guarantee that they will. As many as one in four may, but that means as many as three in four don't. Um, so if they do develop swelling, they can pick it up at a very early stage because they already have all the equipment in their armory to do their part. They just need to find a specialist to help them with the extra bits. I personally think you can start doing them as soon as you want, but the main rider that is appropriate regardless of whether it's immediately after surgery or further on, is that they shouldn't cause you any pain. So they're done to the point that you're comfortable and no further. So that if somebody is only able to do two of any one exercise, then that's what they do. One of the things that I found that I needed to encourage people to do was to pace themselves throughout. Some people would get as far as the fourth exercise and then be too tired to do any more. My advice is that to start with, when you're first trying out the exercises, other than the deep breathing and the shrugs, which most people can do without any great difficulty, the others you only do two or three. Work the way through the whole program. If it doesn't cause you any difficulty, then the next day, three or four. Again, if that's no difficulty, five or six, until you're up to 10, it's far better to do a few of each than to do all of one or two and then be too tired to do any more. It takes me 10 minutes to do the whole of the exercise regime slowly. They, I do know the exercise regime. For people who don't know it, it will take them probably 15 to 20 minutes and I advise that they keep the handout close by to remind them, one, the order and two, the appropriate positions. Once they're very, very comfortable with the exercises, they'll probably need to check once a week that they're still doing them correctly and they'll find that it speeds up. But what they mustn't do is speed up how quickly they do the exercise, otherwise they'll reduce the benefit. The first exercise is a deep breathing exercise, the idea being to wake up the system, to start um, the very end exit point working, and then we work backwards so that if the exit point from the lymph system into the bloodstream is um, around about, for most people, you can consider it um, at the centre of the body, then doing some deep breathing exercises will help wake that system up. We also finish with the same exercise to try and clear the system again. Breathing is actually more difficult than most people think. They assume deep breathing, I just need to do more of what I normally do, whereas we're actually talking about diaphragmatic breathing. So we're expecting people not to breathe from the top of the chest, but from the bottom, in that the lungs are uh, triangular shaped. Most people breathe from the upper part, which is the smallest part, we actually want them to breathe from the lower part because behind that is a reservoir of lymph that we want to activate. So we're asking people to take a deep breath but from lower down the body. Most people find that quite difficult to do and may take some time. They may find it easier to practice it lying on the bed where they can see their 
their abdomen rise and fall, not just their chest. Um, some people find that they are able to do it upright to start with. It's actually the breathing that um, swimmers, dancers, singers will do to enhance their capacity. Um, so it's taking a deep breath in from lower down and then breathing out is the deflation. Most people it's the other way around. They think that as they take a breath in, they go up, this part comes in. I actually want to teach people that when they take a breath in, this area doesn't really move much. It's from lower down and then take a deep breath. So five of those. Breathe in and it expands, breathe out and it relaxes. Um, the next exercise is opening up the lymphatics around the neck area and it's a series of shrugs. So five gentle shrugs up. All the exercises are done slowly. The slower they're done, the better they're done. Um, the more impact. If you do them quickly, you're actually probably overworking the system. So five shrugs up and five shrugs down, which is an odd one. Um, people sometimes find that hard to do because it's actually pulling my shoulders down. It's using my back and my front muscles to do that. Um, and then five shrugs back. Um, the five shrugs back are actually a good one for people to do if they sat at a computer desk a lot because it gets the shoulders going. So that's now woken up the, the neck area where there is um, the movement from the lymph system into the bloodstream occurs around the neck area. Shrug up, equal. Now if you're not equal you might want to do this in a mirror because some of you who've had treatment one side will be a little bit lopsided. So five of those, up and down, equal movements, up and down. Yep. Then you've got five down. Now that's a funny movement. Anybody struggling? So start off straight, then pull your arms, shoulders, elbows, any bits of you down. You're aiming that your hands move down. And you'll feel it across the back. Um, and across. And for those of you who've got breast swelling, this is a good one because you should feel your breast area being pulled. Okay, and then five back. That's just taking the shoulder, not the arms, just the shoulders back. So the arms stay about the same thing. And again, this one's good. Anything that you can feel the chest moving, if you've got any um, breast swelling, is good. So five of those. The next one that we're wanting to do is open up the drainage through the arm pits. Now both arms are exercised because it needs to be done equally. It's very difficult to exercise just one arm appropriately so we treat both. Some patients will have had both armpits affected anyway but um, automatically I ask people to do exercise both sides. So to open up the arm we're just taking straight up over the head and then back down again. Now again it's slow this one has 10. So now all the exercises are 10. What I don't want people to do is to duck their head forward to try and take it. For some people they have not uh, as much range of movement and so I will tell people that if you can only get as far there then your good arm stays as far as your affected arm goes. So if you can only do forward movements that far that's fine, work at it with the aim being that eventually over a period of weeks, you'll get higher until you can get back your full movement. Now, you may notice I'm opening and closing my hand as I go, because otherwise the forearm pump is inactive for that time and the hand can be affected for people who are particularly susceptible. So that's opened up the drainage through the armpit. I'm opening and closing my hand so that I pump the forearm muscle at the same time at the top and the bottom, and it's about this pace. If you throw your arms up, it's joint movement. Can you take your arms up again? I want you to take it only as far as your weaker arm or your problem arm will go. Because otherwise, what you're aiming for is to get everything as normal as possible. So if you are constantly having your arms mismatched, this one will never know what normal should be. But limiting this one, your unaffected arm, will show your affected arm what it should be. So have a go again. And then bring it back down. That's as far as you go. And what you're aiming to do is remind your affected side of where it should go. 
With your hands that way, you, you shut your shoulder anyway. So you actually want to have your thumbs upwards as you go and stop at the point and then bring back down. Also, you need to straighten your arm if you can yeah, because you're getting height by bending the arm, yeah. not by taking the arm. So you, you want to be honest about how high you can go. Yep, yeah, and then back down. And take it smoothly. And the hope is that over a period of time, doing 10 of those a day, where you we do it at the end as well, should um, start to encourage your left shoulder to move forward. But don't try and make it go higher than it will, or pretend that it goes higher than it will, just be honest. Okay? Each of the stages build on and work their way down to the furthest part of the potential problem area and then work back. So next I'm going to work on, as we work our way down to the furthest point and then backwards, is going to be working on the vessels that are affected by the bicep. Muscle activity is the biggest pump for the lymph system. So it's very, very simple. Anybody who's been in the gym will be used to this one. Just bring the arm up, keep the elbow tight to the body so that we're bringing um, and exercising this muscle here. If, if you bring the arm up, it's not as effective. So keep the arm straight. The hands facing palm forwards, bring them up close and open to keep the pump on the forearm activated. Don't flicker because otherwise that will overwork the arm. It's simply enough to do one at the top and one at the bottom or even just one at the top. So 10 of these, nice and slow. Try not to flick them up and flop them down because that's actually joint movement, not muscle. So 10 of those. Hands forward. Don't take it outwards. Take it forwards. Yeah. And take it slow. Yep, everybody looks happy with that. So there are 10 of those. The next one is the only one where you, you will have to move. So I'm going to have to lie on the floor to do this one, or lie on the bed. And we're aiming to work on the muscle that runs down the back of the upper arm. So I'd need to lie down flat on the floor and with my elbows pointed to the ceiling. So the aim is to have my elbow directly above my shoulder. This one is the only exercise that's done one at a time. So they're done separately. Supporting the upper arm with, so if I'm doing my left arm, I would support with my right arm over the, um, the back of the upper arm. And then have my hand close to my ear. So essentially my arm is flopped down close to my ear, hand facing towards the ear. The exercise, that's the start point, requires me to hold the upper arm still, straighten the forearm all the way up, and then to bring it back down again. The trick again is to not throw the arm up and not throw it and not let it flop back down again. For most people, the greatest difficulty they have with this exercise is to work out where the elbow should be um, in relation to the, the shoulder. So when you're lay, laid down, it's just trying to make sure that you've got the elbow po point directly above the shoulder straighten the arm without letting it move and then bring it back down again. Theoretically and practically, providing your arm isn't too bulky, um, you should be able to feel the muscle move under your arm as you straighten and close. And then repeat on the other side exactly the same. Once people are very skilled, then you may find that you can do both at the same time without support, but I wouldn't advise doing that if your shoulder is at all unstable. The main aim for holding the support is to keep the, the elbow above the shoulder so that you don't actually have any risk of damage to the shoulder. People who've had breast cancer treatments have had their shoulders pulled into funny positions. So the last thing that you want to do with this exercise is run the risk of destabilising your shoulder. The exercise is to take your hand straight the way up, so you straighten the arm without moving the, arm, uh, the upper arm, and then bring it down again. Don't drop it down and just have one clench of the hand at the top and the bottom to keep the forearm working. So don't throw it up and don't let it drop down because the exercise is controlling your muscle. And you should, as you become more used to the exercise, start to feel the muscle 
moving underneath. If you drop the arm down too much one way or the other, the muscle won't feel quite so strong because this is the place where this muscle is dominant. <laughs> so, okay, put your arm down mm -hmm. and then start off again. Just doing what you do and then I'll... Okay, you just need to correct so your elbow's above. Yeah. And your hand, palm facing. Okay, off you go. You've got your arm too far back, mm -hmm. so to get maximum movement, it's not much. Does it feel any different? Yeah, I can feel it. Yeah, I can feel more palm that way. Yeah. So if you take it too far away from the 90 degrees, mm -hmm. you get less muscle movement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you want to swap to the other arm? Yeah. And then just see whether you can get it into position. Yeah, that's better. The next exercise is one that is again working on encouraging the drainage past the shoulder but also has another what I think is quite key function which I didn't realise at the time when I put together the exercise programme is to encourage the movement back into the shoulder but also to provide protection against falls, against um, jerks on public transport and it's taking the arms over the shoulder in straight up. Most people, even able-bodied, can't do this straight away because functionally we only use this movement which is very different, reaching into a cupboard, aiming for something, strap hanging. However, if somebody is in a strap hanging situation and jerks, the movement is that. So the aim of the exercise is to get people used to having that slightly unusual movement and so if they are then um, jerked or they fall over and put their arm behind them, it's a similar jerk movement on the shoulder. Their shoulder is already used to having that range of movement. It won't like the jerk, it won't like the injury, but they'll cope much better. And therefore the risk of trauma to the shoulder from normal day-to-day -day activities most people in London will have and other big cities, um, it's minimised. So I usually advise that people imagine that they've got a plate of glass or wall front and back so they can't come forward and if need be do it sideways in a mirror so you can see whether as you come up your arms are moving forward or whether they're staying and like the the exercise here where I encourage people only to go as far as the weaker arm will do same difference here only as far as one both arms will go and two that you're staying in the right direction. So it's far better only to come up a little bit and to work at that slowly and do the 10 in that than it is to do this because you're then not getting the benefit of the exercise. This is no, not going to cause any harm but it's not going to produce the effect that aiming to get up and over the head will be. So let's see how far people can go. The movement is palms out, thumbs upwards, not this because that locks the shoulders, thumbs upward and you are trying to be in as straight a line as if you're a gymnast as possible and be honest with yourself about how, how far you can go. So go up and as soon as you feel you're starting to come forward, then stop and go back down again. Don't push through pain, that's the other thing with these ones, you don't push through pain and it needs to be arms straight. You've got your arms bent. So let's just see. Arms bent, you need to have straight. You've got to keep working at it. Now when I started, I could only get to about here before I could feel myself pulling forward. And I've had to work at keeping my shoulders back to get the height. And in the morning, if I've not done it the day before, I'm stiff, so I have to work at it. So it's not a normal movement. You can't do it as a one-handed, no, because that's fine. Yeah doing it as a two-handed and there are some times when I'm just too tired to be able to do too many of these and that's that's normal so you go as far as you can and then you bring it back down again so the aim of the supplementary exercises for those who've got restricted shoulder movement um, it's adding in one that they may already have been given by their breast cancer nurses of walking fingers up and down the wall. 
Um, the aim being to stretch out the shoulder with support of the wall. What I'm going to suggest is that you do sideways up the wall. Because if you're, if you're struggling with this movement, you actually want to take the arm up in a similar plane. And then as you're able to get the height, you get closer, but keep your arm straight. So you just get closer to the wall. It gives you the height. Can you try on your restrict? And then you take the arm back down again as you would before. And then climb back up. And as you're able to, get closer to the wall. So it just takes the arm up and then drop back down again. The next exercise is a little bit difficult doing sitting down but it can be managed and is designed to work the forearm muscle and also to pump the shoulder at the same time and it's got a kind of a bicycling um, imagining that you've got the pedals of the bicycle that you're using your hands with or that you've got a big old-fashioned whisk for people who remember those old two-handed whisks that used to rotate round um, and because I want to operate the forearm, I'm opening and closing my hand as I go. So I'm imagining I've got pedals. For some people they find it very difficult to imagine that and they're, they're all over the place. Um, it may be that they find it easy to have a rolled up tea towel so that it keeps them the same distance apart and they just roll it around. So there's ten round. You can't open and close the hand at the same time doing a tea towel though. You drop it. And then reverse. Um, if it becomes too difficult to do it with the hands opening and closing, then just keep the hands closed. But you will need at the end to open and close the hand to pump the forearm. So that again is toning the muscles so that when they do pump, they're much more efficient because the more toned muscles, um, but also is pumping the lymph at the same time. So use your hands and then what I'm wanting you to do is pedal and open and close your hands as you go. Try and do less, more of straightforward You've got something on your either side so you can't bang your elbows. So you just do ten of those. So it's one and two and when you've got ten and reverse. So you can now go backwards if you can. Some people find this one a bit confusing and get all disoriented. Okay, so you're just opening and closing your hands. If you really struggle with one or other way, you can always get yourself a tea towel. So you're aiming to work your shoulder and work your upper arm and your forearm. So this one feels quite strenuous. It's designed to be quite strenuous because you're wanting to build stamina and condition the upper arm. Yep, backwards and forwards. So we've now reached the end of the system, if you like. So we're going to work back what we've already done with just three of the exercises. So we're going to use this one again, opening up the drainage under the armpit. So ten more of those. So thumbs forward, up over your head, as far as you can go equally. So if one arm doesn't go as far as the other, then that's as far as you go. So you've got ten more of those. As far as you can go keeping your arms straight if possible. Then we're going to do the shrugs again to encourage the drainage through the neck into the bloodstream. So five more up. Five more down. Five more back. And then five more. Deep breath. 